All right, so for the topic of vectors, you might be wondering, how do I know what to cover? Well, here's what I'm here to help you with. I've gone through every single past exam question, looked at what comes up most often. So these are the very important topics for vectors. Vectors shows up almost solely on paper one. Very rarely does a vector question show up on paper two. So that's why for these very important topics, it's going to be really easy. I can just say, hey, look at that. They all show up pretty much on paper one. So that's really easy. You might get some on paper two, but not very much. If you have anything on paper two, it'll be this one right here. So I'll talk about them in a little bit more detail. Maybe I should start off with uh, a really bad story about vectors. You might wonder how to remember the difference between a vector and a scalar. Remember a scalar is something that just has uh, a magnitude and a vector is something that has a direction and magnitude. And one of my students once actually wrote the best poem. I still remember this poem, it was awesome. Because during Valentine's Day, I thought vectors need some love. So I asked my students, can you write a, a poem with some vectors in it? And someone actually wrote, roses are red, violets are blue, the vectors have direction and magnitude too. See, that's how I remember them. So if you look at this one, this first very important topic, adding and subtracting vectors, it helps to be able to um, move them around by hand. So this is like, you know, having a vector, having another vector and learning to add them head to tail. And those show up most often on paper one. We have working with vectors. This is working with them mathematically. So here you can see the notation, how we write it in sort of a column. We write it sort of like this right here. It might be like V1, V2, V3. Because yes, we can work with vectors in 3D. Mathematically speaking, there's nothing to it. Super easy. We can add them, subtract them, multiply by a scalar, no problem. Then we can find the magnitude or the length of a vector in 2D or 3D, and you'll see that it's just a version of a Pythagorean theorem, just in 3D. So that's pretty straightforward. We can write a vector between two points. So if we know the coordinates of two different points, we can actually write, any, we can write a vector for how to get from this point A to this point B. You know, how do we actually write the vector? That's what we do there. Those are needed. But the most important thing is this one right here, is angle between two vectors. This is when we use what's called the uh, dot product or the scalar product. This is where we learn something like um, A dot B, let's just say, something like this. And we have an equation for this. We can even find, and it's, it has a, an angle component in it. So you can actually find the angle between two vectors and using this dot product. And really important tied to that is how to tell if two angles are parallel. That means they have the same direction vector. Um, but most importantly, by far, by far, the most common thing that shows up is something with this in here. So the angle between two vectors, and in particular, what happens if they're perpendicular? In other words, what happens if the angle between them is 90 degrees? So this is very, very commonly occurring. So these pretty much, these show up together. That's how these show up. And then we have, and this is the most common thing. And second most common thing is this one here, which is how to write the vector equation of a line. So this is um, this whole notion of start here, like start at a point and then go in that direction. How do we write it? And then that's the first one. Second one is the more complicated or more difficult ones. Uh, those are ones where you're having two different vector equations of lines, maybe in 3D, and you're asked like, where do they meet? So that sort of idea about parametric equations and writing them out, these are the second most commonly occurring things. So if you're going to get vector questions, uh, well, I can actually help to make a prediction. We can make a prediction of what's likely going to show up on an exam. What's likely going to happen is on paper two, you're probably not going to have anything on paper two. But if you do have anything, it'll be angle between vectors. Paper one, this is virtually guaranteed. You're going to have angle between vectors. And more specifically, you're very likely going to be asked if it's perpendicular. That's most common for these. Second most common thing is vector equation of a line. Um, and that's this whole notion right here. This is number two. And then the third most common thing, most likely, is magnitude or the length of a vector. So this hopefully helps you out. This gives you an introduction to what we're going to be doing. Let's get started.